Antichrist peace treaty has been canceled. You say, what are you talking about? Uh, well, I honestly do not have, and I'd like anybody out there, you can put it in the comments, I'd love to, to know, where did this teaching of this peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims, the Arabs or whatever, where did that, that thing come from? Who started that teaching? Um, I've heard that thing repeated many times. I've repeated it myself, and I'm sorry about that because it is false. There's no scripture to back that thing up. Show me if there is. Show me where it says a peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. It's not there. Um, go to Daniel chapter 9. I'll show you where they try to get this thing from. Dan Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. It says here, And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Here it is, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. In the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolation. Or the, upon the desolate. Okay, and people say, well, that's that's the Messiah there, you know, Jesus. He's he's the one that, that you know, confirms the covenant. Uh, no, that's not true. Because it goes on to say, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Uh, Jesus isn't the one that does that. That's the Antichrist, the man of sin. He sets himself up in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God and demanding to be worshipped, in other words. Okay, this is not talking about the Messiah. It's talking about the Antichrist there. But uh, it does not say peace treaty. It does not, the words Jews and Muslims aren't even in there. All right? Uh, you know, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy holy, or thy people and upon thy holy city, verse 24, certainly. You see the Jews there, the nation of Israel, and the holy city being Jerusalem. But where are the Muslims mentioned? You say, well, the, the, the covenant, the, co the brother of the covenant, the confirming the covenant, that's the peace treaty. Um, Again, I, I see this thing so many times with people that call themselves Bible believers. They'll come up with these totally unscriptural terms and they'll say, well, covenant means peace treaty. Godhead means trinity. Um, and they'll come up with all these other things. Uh, no, no, it doesn't say that. He confirms the covenant. Why is the word covenant so significant? Because there is a covenant that is in the future. The Lord has a new covenant it's, and again, the, the new versions will actually take out the words New Testament and they'll replace it with New Covenant. Well, that's very, very dangerous. I have a whole study on that, the whole thing of the New Covenant and showing why it's very wicked and very satanic to change New Testament to New Covenant. The New Covenant's not here yet. The New Testament is, all right? The New Testament is in Jesus Christ. He's the testator. Hebrews chapter 9 talks about that. He died on the cross. He began the New Testament with his death. That does not start the New Covenant. It's very important to understand that. And understanding from the scriptures that Satan always counterfeits everything that the Lord does. The Lord has a new covenant for the nation of Israel. And what does Satan do? He confirms a new covenant. Let's read about it. Go back to Isaiah chapter 28. I'll show you what this covenant is all about. This confirming the covenant. It has nothing to do with Jews and Arabs getting along or agreeing to give certain parts of the city of Jerusalem or whatever else. To, uh, no, that's not there. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 14 through 22. says here, Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Is the leadership in Jerusalem pretty wicked right now? Yeah. And uh, by the way, they already did sign a covenant or they already did sign an agreement, I should say it that way, back in the early 1990s uh, about giving the city of uh, Jerusalem over to the Vatican to have it as an international city because of the holy sites there that the Vatican owns. You know? The Church of the Holy, or the what's the Holy Sepulchre or whatever else. There's a bunch of things there than in Jerusalem that the Vatican owns. You know? And it's funny, too, because the... Uh, Mosque of Omar, the, the Dome of the Rock and all that stuff. You know, you say, well, that's the Muslims. That, uh, you know, was it Jordan that owns that, that owns the ground there? Uh, yeah, but you got Irish Catholics, literally a construction company from Ireland that's owned by a Roman Catholic. I talked about this in my one study. And uh, the guy, they're fixing the temple and taking care of the temple and stuff. You can't find any uh, Arabic people to do that. 
that's another story. And uh, it's not the, the Temple Mount there and whatever else. It's not the Temple Mount. It's Fort Antonia. Right? It is not where the temple was, was at back there in the first century. Why? Well, because Jesus Christ said that not one stone would be left upon another. And you get the big wall there, the kotal or whatever that they call it. You know, you get this wall there and the, and the Jews are putting little pieces of paper in there. and stuff. That's not the wall that Jesus was talking about. That's not where the temple was. Hmm. The leadership in Jerusalem is, is wicked. I support the nation of Israel. Certainly, I support their right to be there, but their leadership's wicked. Very wicked. Verse 15, Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing, overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a liar from the beginning. We have made lies our refuge. Jesus Christ rebuking the uh, Jewish uh, scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees of his day. Hmm. In John 8 is where you'll find that whole thing at. Very interesting. Uh, they've rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Jesus Christ is truth personified. I am the way, the truth, and life. No man, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse 6 talks about that. Hmm. So the wicked Jewish leadership, they make a covenant with death and hell. Interesting. Very interesting. And uh, death and hell, I will tell you right now that that's the Catholic Church. And they even teach that they have the keys of death and hell. Very interesting. Verse 16, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. Well, there are some big, big tie-ins to the time of Jacob's trouble. Some real big tie-ins there. Hmm. Remember what we read in Dan Daniel chapter 9 about the end being with a flood? The waters shall overflow the hiding place. Read Revelation chapter 12. The dragon casts out of his mouth a flood. All ties together. Look at verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Huh. The holy city will the Gentiles tread down, the Bible talks about. Trodden underfoot of the Gentiles. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night. And it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it. And the covering narrower than that uh, he can wrap himself in it. For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perazium, and he shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his strange act. Um, one man versus 200 million man army, and the Antichrist and the false prophet leading it. In Revelation chapter 19, I'd say it's kind of a strange work. You know, I mean, talk about a fight. <laughs> one man versus 200 million. Yeah, and the Lord does it because he's angry. Um, the overflowing scourge, uh, almost like the time of uh, Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Verse 22. Now therefore, be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a, consum a consumption, even determined upon the whole earth. Interesting. It isn't the, the time of Jacob's trouble is just going to be localized in Israel and God's just going to judge the Jews and that's good. It's the whole earth. Revelation chapter 6, he takes peace from the earth. There's not going to be any place. This is not going to be a safe place to come to in the time of Jacob's trouble. There's going to be a, well, boy, it sure is bad over there in Israel, but but here in, in America, it's, it's really good. Nope. Nope. Uh, the Antichrist Peace Treaty has been canceled. 
Why? Because it never existed in the first place. There is no peace treaty. And I hold to the teaching that I believe what's going to happen is the final covenant that's going to happen there is that the nation of Israel is going to come under Vatican control. You say in exchange for it, the Jews would never do that. They would never. They'll do it if it means the wiping out, the slaughtering of the Muslims. The Vatican comes along with their new Pope, Pope Christ, you know, Pope Antichrist, but it'd be called probably Pope Jesus Christ or Judas Christ, or I don't even know. I'm not sure yet. I can't be dogmatic on the name of the Pope or whatever. I think he's going to be a counterfeit for Jesus Christ. But, um, but he comes out and he says to those Jews, hey, uh, how about giving us control? How about letting me sit in the temple over there that you've built? I want to be in that temple and things. We want, we want the real estate. We want the uh, deed to that over there. And the Jews will say, uh, I don't know about that. I, you know, We'll wipe out the Muslims for you. See, it's not a peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims. It's going to be a covenant with death and hell. And think about, think about the wording. Think about the wording. A covenant with death and hell? With death and hell as part of the covenant, in other words. It's not just that the Vatican is the one that's, you know, death and hell and whatever. They're actually guaranteeing death of a billion plus Muslims and hell for them. And, you know, the Antichrist comes out and he goes forth conquering and to conquer. Again, if there's a peace treaty between the Jews and the Muslims, who's the Antichrist conquering? Is it Christians? <laughs> oh, please. Christians are a minority, a very, very small minority of the people in the, you know, Bible-believing, real, true, born-again Christians, I'm saying. You know, that's not going to be the war, going out and uniting all people and things like this. Uh, but how about a crusade against Islam? where the Vatican says to the Jews, the little carrot on the stick, the little temptation thing, and they say, we'll wipe out all the Muslims. We'll destroy all of Islam. You ready to confirm the covenant? Benjamin Netanyahu? Or whoever's going to be in charge of Israel at the time? Just sign here, and we'll start the war. No more Islam. No more uh, Taliban. No more Palestinian state. Just sign it. They will in a heartbeat. So uh, I think we need to just get this thing out of our vocabulary about the Antichrist peace treaty and whatever else. And he's going to have a peace treaty. There is no peace treaty in the King James Bible. And uh, like I said, if anybody knows where that teaching came from, you know, it might have been Schofield or or. I have no idea who came up with this thing of this peace treaty. I'd like to know. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, and I apologize. I've had to apologize on a number of stands that I've taken over the years that I've come out and I have honestly said I was wrong. And people don't seem to notice that. But uh, I was wrong for teaching this peace treaty that the Antichrist is going to sign this peace treaty. I'm not going to be teaching that anymore. So that is going to be it. I thank you very much for watching.